Nikolai Volkov was a professional wrestler who debuted in the 1960s and performed up until his passing in 2018. Born Josip Peruzovic in Yugoslavia on October 14, 1947, he immigrated to Canada after a weightlifting tournament in Vienna in the late 1960s. Standing 6 foot 4 and weighing over 300 pounds, he caught the attention of Calgary promoter Stu Hart and made his debut in Stampede Wrestling in 1967. Throughout his career, he wrestled under various names such as Bipo Mongol, Boris Brezenkov, and most famously, Nikolai Volkov. He performed in almost every major promotion during his career while being billed as a Russian from the Soviet Union and singing the Soviet national anthem before every match, usually being drowned out by booze and on several occasions being attacked by his opponent before even finishing singing. One of the staples of the World Wrestling Federation's national expansion during the 1980s with his tag team partner the Iron Sheik and was co-holder of the tag team titles on multiple occasions. This is the untold story of Josip Peruzovic aka Nikolai Volkov. Josip grew up in the Socialist Republic of Croatia, which was then part of Yugoslavia. His father was Croatian and his mother was Russian. His maternal grandfather, Ante Tomasevic, was world champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at the turn of the 20th century. His brother is Croatian footballer Luka Peruzovic, who played for Yugoslavia in the 1974 World Cup. In 1967, Josip slipped away one night from his Yugoslavian weightlifting team during a tournament in Vienna. He walked into the Canadian Embassy and defected from behind the Iron Curtain. It was an easy choice, he recalled years later, remembering how he studied philosophy as a teenager in Croatia and decided he was not destined to live under a communist regime. He ended up in Canada, landing in Calgary, and after watching Stampede Wrestling on TV, found his way to Stu Hart's dungeon and began his professional wrestling career. He met Canadian wrestler Newton Tatry, also known as Jito Mongol. Tatry took Josip under his wing as a protege, and alongside Stu Hart, trained the non-English speaking 350-pound man to become a professional wrestler. They would become a tag team as he began using the name Bipol Mongol. They made their way to North Bay, Ontario for a few months. Later, the Mongols were brought to the United States in 1968 and began being managed by Tony Angelo and later Lou Albano. In 1970, he faced Bruno Sammartino in Madison Square Gardens to a sold-out crowd. They captured the WWF International Tag Team Championship from Tony Marino and Victor Rivera on June 15, 1970. After losing the title to Luke Graham and Tarzan Tyler in a match over a year later that unified the WWF International and WWF World Tag Team Championship. After getting married and having a family, Josip decided to move on to becoming a singles wrestler, mainly because of the haircut he was forced to wear to fit the Mongol character. Bill Eady would fill his role on the Mongol tag team. Josip made his way to Texas to work for Fritz von Erich and WCCW, who was impressed by Josip's muscular build, as most big men in that day were mostly fat. In 1974, he moved to the AWA where he wrestled under the name Boris Brzezinkov, managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. He used the same gimmick with a different ring name. He would return to the World Wide Wrestling Federation by the end of 1974, now known as Nikolai Volkov, and feud with Bruno Sammartino selling out Madison Square Garden several times. He would have ongoing feuds with Pedro Morales, Chief J Strongbow, and Gorilla Monsoon. In 1976, he made a one-off appearance as a mask executioner as he became the third member along with Killer Kowalski and Big John Studd. They captured the World Tag Team Championship, but it was vacated due to a third member interfering. During this time in the WWF, Nikolai was announced as being from Mongolia. In 1977, he began what would be several tours in Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling and All Japan Pro Wrestling, but still returning to the WWF and continue his feud with Bruno Sammartino as well as the likes of SD Jones. 
years. In 1983, while doing sporadic tours of Japan, Nikolai wrestled for Cowboy Bill Watts in the Mid-South region and began partnering with a young Barry Darso, who was known as Crusher Darso, a turncoat American who was now a Soviet sympathizer. Feuding with both Jim Duggan and the Junkyard Dog, he made brief appearances in Florida Championship Wrestling, and while facing Manny Fernandez, the battle turned into a real fight when Fernandez showed up for their match drunk and began working stiff. Nikolai asked that Fernandez ease up several times, and when Fernandez didn't oblige, he was legitimately knocked out by several punches from Nikolai, as Nikolai was also a semi-professional boxer, aside from being a pro wrestler. In July 1984, Nikolai returned to the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, now named WWF, and the next month defeating SD Jones on Georgia Championship Wrestling, when Vince McMahon's World Wrestling Federation took over the time slot on Superstation WTBS. That same year, Vince McMahon decided to team him up with former world champion the Iron Sheik, who had just lost the title earlier that year to Hulk Hogan. He began singing his rendition of the Soviet National Anthem, and they became one of the most despised teams of that time. Originally, he was going to play the song from a cassette tape, but it got lost before the match, so Nikolai got on the microphone and claimed the junkyard dog stole it, and he would sing it instead. He claimed that was the only time he was ever nervous in the ring. From that point on, he sang before every match. The team became managed by classy Freddie Blassie. They won the World Tag Team Championship from the U.S. Express, Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo at the first WrestleMania at Madison Square Garden when Sheik had knocked out Wyndham from behind with Blassie's cane. Part of the pair's regular entrance consisted of waving the flags of Iran and the Soviet Union, then demanding that the crowd be quiet and show respect, while Volkov sang the Soviet national anthem, a demand that usually only attracted boos from the usually pro-American crowds. Sheik then usually grabbed the mic and said, Iran number one, Russia number one, USA hak pui which was followed by a simulated spitting act. It was all designed to get major heat from the crowd, which turned out to be a successful formula. On May 11th, 1985, at the first Saturday night's main event, Sheik Volkov and George Steele were defeated by the team of Wyndham Rotundo and Ricky Steamboat. Wyndham and Rotundo would win back the titles from Sheik and Volkov. After losing the titles back to Rotundo and Wyndham, Nikolai began to wrestle more in singles competition. He faced Hulk Hogan for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship on several occasions in 1985 and 1985. 1986, including a flag match on Saturday night's main event at the Brendan Byrne Arena. Nikolai also feuded with former 82nd Airborne Paratrooper Corporal Kirshner through 1985 and 86, defeating him in a peace match on Saturday night's main event. Their feud ended when Kirshner used Blassie's cane to defeat Volkov at WrestleMania 2 in another flag match during the Chicago portion of the event. In the fall of 1986, Volkov's manager Classy Freddie Blassie sold half interest in his stable of superstars to the Doctor of Style Slick. As the age Blassie was taking a step back from the business. This was a storyline aimed at reducing Blassie's active role, and the Hollywood fashion plate eventually retired in the fall of 1986 at the age of 68. Sheik and Volkov feuded with WWF newcomer Jim Duggan for the majority of 1987, including Duggan running into the ring and stopping the Russian singing before their match against the Killer Bees at WrestleMania 3. Sheik and Volkov won by disqualification when Duggan entered the ring while chasing Volkov and then hitting Sheik with his 2x4 while he had the camel clutch on jumping Jim Brunzel. After WrestleMania 3, Sheik and Volkov began a feud with Duggan, who would often run down to the ring and attack Volkov and Sheik. This occurred on an episode of Saturday Night's Main Event when the Can-Am Connection wrestled and defeated Sheik and Volkov after Duggan, who was sitting in the front row of the audience, interfered due to the cheating of Sheik, Volkov, and Slick. Sheik and Volkov were forced to disband when Sheik and Duggan were pulled over by New Jersey State Police on their way to a WWF event. Even though Sheik and Duggan were feuding on screen, they were not in real life. Officers suspected Duggan of DUI. After a search of the vehicle and the persons, police discovered that Duggan was under the influence of marijuana while Sheik was high on cocaine. Small amounts of cocaine were also found in the vehicle. Duggan received a conditional release while Sheik was placed on probation for a year. The scandal that erupted after the two in-ring enemies were found drinking and doing drugs together led to the end of the angle, Sheik's release, and Duggan's temporary departure from the WWF. Nikolai and the Sheik were completely opposite when it came to traveling on the road. As Sheik liked to party, while Nikolai liked to save his money and go back to his room every night early and get a good night's sleep. After Sheik was fired, Slick replaced him with Boris Zukov, another alleged Russian to form the Bolsheviks. They feuded with WWF newcomers Powers of Pain, losing to them at the inaugural SummerSlam pay-per-view in 1988. But unfortunately, the Bolsheviks did not gain the level of success as did the partnership with the Iron Sheik, as they lost most of their matches and eventually Slick as their manager. Nikolai was also responsible for reconnecting Freddie Blassie with his daughter that he had not seen in years. 
When Russia fell and communism died, Nikolai decided he no longer wanted to be a heel and stopped singing the Soviet national anthem and began singing the U.S. national anthem and became very pro-West, which led to a feud with Sergeant Slaughter, who had an Iraqi sympathizer role and teamed with the former Iron Sheik, who had recently become an Iraqi under the name Colonel Mustafa. After Nikolai's team defeated Slaughter's team at the 1990 Survivor Series with Tito Santana as a sole survivor, Nikolai left the WWF at the end of 1990. He made a brief return to compete in 1992 at the Royal Rumble match, as well as to face Hercules in a house show. After leaving WWF, Volkov began competing on the independent circuit. On May 3, 1991, he defeated his former Bolshevik partner Boris Zukov for the Trans World Wrestling Federation in Newington, Connecticut. In 1992, he went to Eastern Championship Wrestling in Philadelphia, where he feuded with Vladimir Markov. On August 8th, he went to Puerto Rico to wrestle for World Wrestling Council WCC 19th anniversary show, losing to the Patriot. On October 2nd, he lost to ECW champion Don Morocco. On April 4th, 1993, he wrestled his former partner, the Iron Sheik, to a double countout at a Wrestling in the USA event in Livingston, New Jersey. He then returned to ECW on October 16th, 1993, and lost to Jimmy Snuka. He returned as a babyface to pin Barry Horowitz at WWF Superstars All-American Wrestling Taping on July 6, 1993. On February 1, 1994, Nikolai began a full-time return to the WWF, making a ringside appearance at a Superstars taping in White Plains, New York, during a match between Diesel and Mike Moraldo. For the next two months, Volkov was shown in the crowd, until eventually he became a sympathetic heel, playing the whipping boy of Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Corporation. In the storyline, Nikolai had fallen on hard times and was forced to take a job working for DiBiase and his new corporation. As a low man in the group, he was forced to wrestle matches no one else wanted, or sent out to soften up opponents for other members of the stable as a sacrificial lamb of the group. The disrespect even extended to renaming him Nickel and Dime Volkov, and DiBiase forcing him to place a scent sign on his trunks where the Russian sickle once was, along with a sign on his ring attire that read Property of the Million Dollar Man. The final WWF match for Nikolai was on December 30, 1994, when he defeated Bob Starr in a house show. Nikolai's final appearance in the WWF was at the Boston Garden on May 13, 1995. During a match between Bam Bam Bigelow and Tatanka, Nikolai made an appearance to chase Tatanka's manager, Ted DiBiase, away. He made a brief cameo on an episode of Shotgun Saturday Night in 1997, where Todd Pettingale discovered him homeless sleeping in a box on the streets of New York City. He also appeared at WrestleMania 17 at the Astrodome in Houston in the Gimmick Battle Royal, which was won by the Iron Sheik. On November 30th, 2001, he lost to King Kong Bundy at an AAWA event in Jersey City, New Jersey. On February 3rd, 2005, Nikolai was announced as one of the WWF Hall of Fame inductees for the class of 2005. He was inducted on April 2nd of that year by Jim Ross in Los Angeles. In 2006, Nikolai took part in the World Wrestling Legends pay-per-view, The Reunion. Managed by the Iron Sheik, he wrestled a match against Duggan. Before the match, he once again sang the national anthem of the Soviet Union, and riled up the crowd. Nikolai made his first appearance on WWE television in over two years on the August 13th, 2007 episode of Raw as a contestant on WWE Isle, a parody of American Idol. Nikolai appeared alongside the Iron Sheik and Howard Finkel, although Nikolai was the only one who sang. Nikolai sang the Soviet national anthem, receiving boos from the crowd despite being a babyface, and was insulted by Judge William Regal, although Judges Mick Foley and Maria both praised the performance. In response, the Sheik, who was also insulted, went on a tirade until both he and Nikolai were escorted out of the building by security. Nikolai worked with the Baltimore County Police Athletic League Kids Program, and he previously worked as a code enforcement officer in Baltimore City. Nikolai passed away at his home on July 29, 2018, at the age of 70, days after being released from the hospital in Maryland, where he had been treated for dehydration and other medical issues. That was the untold story of Josip Peruzovic, a.k.a. Nikolai Volkov.